Hello and welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Uh, today we're going to have a look at how we configure 802.1x on the Brocade uh, ICX, MLXE, um, FastRNSX. It's all the same. Um, so essentially 802.1x is going to be a, um, you're going to need a supplicant, which is your user, usually your PCs, your printers, things like that are going to be your supplicant. So they have an 802.1x client on them. Now, Windows has a built-in one. Um, you may use a third-party one. Maybe it comes with your security provider. I don't know. But certainly, Windows has one built in. Um, and so it, as, as the client logs on, it's going to send authentication packets to us, the switch, which is called the authenticator. And the authenticator is then going to go to a radius server, ask if that user is allowed to get permission or not, and then um, either put their, their port into forwarding, or it's going to drop all the packets and hardware, or it's going to put them into um, you know a dynamic VLAN, or if they fail authentication, um, we'll put them into a restricted VLAN. So uh, any of those things are possible. So we'll have a look at dynamic VLANs as well. Um, but the vast majority of the configuration errors in this case are the radius server. So we support any standards-based radius server. Um, it could be Microsoft, it could be a uh, free radius, or it could be a multitude of other standards-based radius servers. We don't really care from our perspective as long as they follow the standard, but certainly Microsoft and free radius are the two biggest out there. Um, for details on how to configure those, there is some really good white papers on the Brocade site. So have a, have a um, you know, search the Brocade site or search Google for, for um, those white papers, and they will give you a step-by-step, -step, including exactly the parameters you need to set up on the Radius server. Okay, so from our perspective, though, fairly simple. So what you, what you want to do is you need, to, you need a, a default VLAN. So you want to set that VLAN up before you start your authentication configuration. Um, and so that default VLAN is the VLAN that the users are going to sit in before they're authenticated. Okay. Um, you may also need, if you're dynamically putting users into VLANs based on information it gets back from the radius server, those VLANs are going to need to be pre-created uh, or those users will fail authentication. And, um, you may also want a uh, sandbox VLAN or a VLAN, a restricted VLAN. So if users fail authentication, do you want them to get dropped in hardware, which is what happens by default, or do you want them to get put into a, a default VLAN? Maybe they only get internet access, or maybe they get access only to the company intranet, or um, you know something like that if they, if they fail authentication. Uh, and lastly, which is used less often, but it's still possible, there's a critical VLAN. So the critical VLAN is uh, where, your, where your ports get put if the radius, if the authentication times out. Okay? So first thing we need to do, well, we need to set up a radius server first. So, I'll, you know, it's just a, uh, um, we're going to config T here. Excuse me. Um, and then it is a radius dash server. Right, and then um, we need to give it a host. So the host, 192, yeah, 192.168.1.150, right? And then um, you could just hit enter here and that will use that radio server for everything. Or you can actually go in and do uh, an authentication port and, and tell it that it's for um, .1x authentication only. In this case, I don't care. We can use it for anything. So we're just going to enter that host. And then you need a uh, radius server key. Um, and it can be, what, whatever this is, it needs to be set at both ends, right? You need to set it on the radius server as well when you set up the, the um, device on the radius server. Um, okay, so we have the radius server set up. The next thing we want to do is set up AAA. So AAA authentication .1x. Uh, default radius. So there's our .1x authentication set up. Um, and so then we go into uh, a subcontext called authentication. So uh, just hit enter on that. It puts us into the subcontext. You'll see it changed the prompt here to config authentication. And under this, we have many options here. Um, so, But there's a few that are absolutely required to get this to work. So one is we need an auth um, default VLAN. 
uh, and then give it a number. So, so this is the VLAN that the users are going to sit in before they're authenticated. Okay. Um, and that VLAN, so that VLAN 10 has to be created. If I tried to enter that and said VLAN 10, it would tell me that that VLAN doesn't exist. So it has to be an existing VLAN before we start. Okay. Uh, then we do .1x enable to turn on .1x. And then we do a .1x, uh, and we tell it what, po oops, not dit one x .1x, um, enable, and then we have to tell it what ports we want to enable it on. So either all the ports on the device or particular ports. You can do a range of ports. So I'm just going to turn it on on one port at the moment. Okay. Okay, so that's most of it. Now the last thing we need to do to make this work is we need to go to the interface itself or the range of interfaces and change the port control. So by default, those port control modes are going to, are going to allow devices without authentication. Um, and that's not what we want. So what we want to do is change the port control to automatic, which means that depending on what the... Um, you know, what the, what the current status is of 802.1x, whether the, the traffic will be allowed or not. Um, if you, for example, if you turn it on on all the ports, right, your uplink ports are going to then get shut down because they're going to be unauthenticated. So you may want to, you know, set those for, for, for allowed all the time rather than having to authenticate, or you could just exclude them from the range if you want to do a range of commands like I am. Um, okay, so we go to the interface, interface E 1 slash 1 slash 11, and we do um, dot one x right uh, port dash control uh, and then there's auto force authorized force unauthorized so by default it's going to go to force authorized which means that everything's going to be allowed um, but what you want to do almost all the time is you want to leave that in auto mode okay so if we look at uh, show VLAN uh, for example we're going to see that our port 1 slash 1 slash 11 is actually in VLAN 10. So it's not in the default VLAN. It is in, in here because it's now changed to that auth default VLAN, right? Which is, so it's going to sit there until it gets authenticated. Okay. So now um, let's look at a couple of show commands here. We could do a show dot uh, one X configuration. Right, so we see that we are authenticator only. Dot one X is enabled. Um, the default VLAN is 10. Uh, auth VLAN mode is single untagged. Uh, you can change that if you like. Uh, I don't. I don't have a restricted VLAN or a critical VLAN or a guest VLAN configured. You can certainly add all those parameters. Um, so a guest VLAN is uh, for devices that don't run 802.1 X. So if it's I don't know, um, a printer or something without a .1x client, it's going to go into that guest VLAN, right? If it's uh, if it fails authentication, it'll go into the restricted. If it times out authentication, it'll go into critical. Um, uh, so all of those are possible to be configured, but none of them are configured right now. Action on authentication failure right now is block traffic, and that is the default, but we can, we can change that to restricted VLAN quite simply. Um, okay, and so... So that's the basis of it. So then let's see what happens. Uh, what else can we look at? So 802.1x right now, if we look at sessions, excuse me, sessions all, we don't have any sessions, okay? So I'm going to plug a laptop in here. And the first thing is I'm going to have it fail authentication, actually, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so I typed in the wrong username and password for that device, and so we see on port uh, 1 slash 1 slash 11, here's its Mac, it doesn't have an IP, it doesn't have a username because it's failed authentication, um, uh, and then we see VLAN 4092, well it's blocked, right, so, so it's going into this blocked VLAN which doesn't go anywhere. Uh, we could have a dynamic ACL as well that comes from the radius server, but we don't at the moment, and it's in a held state. So. Um, so this is what it looks like when it's failed authentication. And then if we look at um, session brief here, we see that um, 
we have number of users on that port is one, uh, number of denied users is one, and then the untagged VLAN type is auth default VLAN, um, dynamic port ACLs, no, dynamic Mac filters, no, so we haven't learned these from the, from the device. Okay, so let me unplug that, and I'll plug it back in, and this time I'll try to type in the correct username and password and see if that authenticates. Okay, so my device now believes that it is, uh, so session brief. Okay, so here we go. So now we have number of users one, number of authorized users is one. Um, it Now it's saying radius VLAN. I actually have dynamic VLAN set up on my radius server. So there's nothing I need to do from the switch perspective to make this work. It's going to get a VLAN number from um, my user group uh, or my user account on the radius server, and it's dynamically going to put me in the correct VLAN. Um, I don't have uh, dynamic ACLs or MAC filters set up, which I could, but I don't at the moment. Um, and then if we look at the sessions here, so here's my session, same MAC address. I, if I had an IP address, my, my laptop is still trying to get an IP address because I don't have a DHCP server on that subnet. Um, but if I had an IP address, it would tell me it here. It's, it shows the username I logged in with. It dynamically put me in VLAN 500, uh, and it's in a permit state, and it's authenticated as opposed to before it was in a held state, right? Um, so the uh, let's see. The other thing I can do is we'll go back in and we'll configure. We'll go back into a authentication subcontext, um, and what we're going to do is we'll set up a restricted VLAN. So restricted. Uh, and say my restricted VLAN is 20, okay? Um, and then we're going to go in and do... Um, um, right, set the authentication fail action. And we'll set that to restricted VLAN. Okay, so now what it's going to do is whatever my restricted VLAN is, which I set to 20 previously, it's going to, when I fail, rather than dropping my traffic in hardware, it's going to put me into, an, into the, uh, the fail VLAN, right? So I'm going to unplug my laptop here, plug it back in one more time. I'm going to use the wrong username and password so it fails authentication. And then if I go back in and look at my show.1x, um, uh, sessions, oops, excuse me, session all, okay, now um, it's saying that I'm restricted and in this restricted VLAN number 20, right, so rather than blocking my traffic, remember it said block before, it now says restricted and in VLAN 20, so this is my sandbox VLAN where, you know, I can go and who knows, maybe, I, maybe I'm a guest in your building and I only want or you're only want to grant them internet access and nothing internal, well, that's exactly what you would use that for. That restricted VLAN may have internet access and that's it. Um, okay, so that is the very basics. Um, it's pretty simple to configure for the most part. Uh, as I said, the vast majority of issues with 802.1x is on the server side, not our side. Um, but there's uh, lots of different options that I did not cover within this video, like ACLs and things like that, that um, you can certainly look up in the guide. All right. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it.